Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void and a cheese compilation for May 2022 here on Olrena, which is a super old map. We've got ourselves a Pink Terran player representing Root. It is Slayer. And yeah, let's say top left, bottom left, and the top left, we've got a red Zerg player named Kim Jong Yoon. So, Olrena is an old map. I think it's from the Heart of the Swarm expansion, I feel like. And is this? Wow, so this is a GM level replay, huh? A GM level replay sent to falconpaladin at gmail.com and screened by my screeners, Jim, Stefan, and Sniper Monkey. Thanks for all of your work, my screeners, and we'll see it again next month. All right, so one Rex expand here from Slayer. Pool first into a Roach Warren after expansion from Kim. So we're gonna go ahead and get started very, very early here. Oh, hey, what? What are we doing? Can we, um, just sneak in the long way around here? The Reaper shows up, and there are no Zerglings. And Zergling's showing up at your main base here, at your natural here, Slayer. And the bunker is not going to come up because the SCV will die, and canceling that bunker would be a good idea. There we go. And canceling your expansion as well. So these are slowlings. And again, this is, I want to say, a GM level replay. Because players that represent Root are excellent. And yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Two kills for this Reaper. Are you going to die? You're not going to die to... Oh my gosh, you died to Slowlings. Okay, so that hurts. That hurts a lot, actually. Losing that Reaper means you don't have any map control at all whatsoever here. And there are... There's a Roach Warren. And there are Roaches. Yep. Roaches, Ravager showing up. This is really problematic for Slayer. So he's got a bunker at the top. He's got another bunker coming up here, too. He's got a tank on the way, which is going to be really useful here for sure. A cyclone might be your better option, but I do like the tank idea, too, as long as it's set far enough back. Oh, you know what? Never mind. You can't siege it up here because Corrosive Biles are coming. And using the Corrosive Biles on something that's stationary instead of trying to chase the tank is a great idea. Killing the SCV. Building that bunker is so, so smart here. Kim Jung Yoon is looking really, really in control of this game right now. Slayer's going to have to have some amazing micro. That's a double stacked supply depot too. So it's going to supply block him really heavily. That was two supply depots worth of supply instead of just the one. Marines are chasing the Overlord away, getting rid of some of the vision here. Oh no, but now the door is open and Kim Jung Yoon is all over this. I don't know if we've got a dead Terran here or not. I don't know who this Kim Jung Yoon player is, but he's taking down Slayer quite possibly. The tanks are getting some work done. The tanks are staying alive. A lot of SCVs are dying, though, which is a problem. The Ravagers are cleaned up. And actually, Slayer holds that. He loses 10 SCVs. More things are coming in here, but his tanks are, again, kicking it here. Still, 8 kills, 6 kills on those siege tanks. This is an absolutely fantastic way to start our cheese compilation today. Hit that like button if you're ex excited and enjoying it so far. I like that Slayer's moving out. He's like, you know what? I understand uh, my opponent cut a lot of drones here. Probably wants to drone up to get his economy back online, so I'm just going to go kill him and hope he doesn't have any kind of an army. And you know what? There isn't any kind of an army back home here for Kim whatsoever. The Lings are out here on the right side of the map. Oh, wow. I don't know that sieging here is even required. There's nothing here. He's giving up the natural base. These Lings are like quick, super long way around. That's what's weird about this old Reyna map. Again, I've cast games on this map before. I've watched many games on this map before. Just been a while since I've been here. This is This has got to be some kind of a practice match or something, doesn't it? I feel like it does. So a couple of links here get inside the main base. Only oh, a lot of links show up actually. This is gonna get crazy real, real fast. All of a sudden, uh, the natural base of the Zerg player is gonna die, and a one basing Zerg to a one basing Terran is really hating life in the Zerg's perspective here. Liberator shows up, not that great against a lot of links that are killing stuff. They're too fast. It takes one shot to kill a Zergling, but the attacks are slow and it's overkill a lot. From that Liberator, so the natural base dies. The Broodlings are going to try to absorb some shots so the Lings can come in. Absolutely fantastic attempt here, and okay. All right. The tanks stay alive. The tanks are really key here. 15 kills and 16 kills on those siege tanks. 
A, a Marine shows up, a couple SCVs more get bruised up and die right now. It's 18 to 23 workers, but the Terran player, I don't think... Can the Terran player break this? I don't know if the Zerg player can defend it. It's really, really tough stuff here. I think we can probably move the... Do you want to... Are you just going to deny? I like just denying the natural base. That seems like the smart thing to do. Speedlings come in. Nice target firing, but another take is here. That's not going to happen. Nope. Marines die. Reinforcing Marines show up here. Slayers continuing to cruise across the map with additional Marines. This Liberator is going to be a massive problem, too. Trying to maybe set up and cover this ramp entrance. There's just a queen here, though. Production tab is five roaches, but not against this. GG Slayer makes a beautiful comeback in a super high level. TVZ between players with 229 and 361 APM, respectively. Fantastic job. Oh, Hyper One was watching this game. Well, Hyper One, you must have sent this replay in. Did you hold some kind of a tournament where Root was involved and uh, Slayer was here? I That might have absolutely happened. But yeah, end of the day, 3,000 resources lost for Kim and only 1,700 from Slayer. So sure, 15 SCVs died mm -hmm, and only two drones died. But look who had the, it's 22 to 23 workers at the end of the game. Slayer just had the better economy because their players has to use Larva on Roaches, Ravagers, right? And Zerglings and stuff, so it hurts your economy. And any kind of early Zerg aggression is going to have a really hard time holding against a counterattack if that Zerg aggression fails, right? It's exactly what we saw here today. So yeah, if you're watching the cheese and you're like, I'd like Falcon to cast my cheese game, well, by all means, send it to falconpowdern at gmail.com the subject of cheese, all right? And here are the rules. The higher level it is, the more likely it is to be cast. So GM, Masters, Professional level, more likely to be cast. Number two, seven minutes or shorter, please. If it's nonstop action for eight or nine or ten minutes, then we'll allow it. But if it's just kind of like a boring regular style game that's eight minutes long, we're not going to do it, right? And also the other rule is no worker rushes unless it's some kind of super unique spin on the worker rush we've never seen before, right? Okay, so those are the rules. Again, thanks to Steph and Jim and Sniper Monkey for screening them for this month. And that is a rocking way to start. Let's move on to game number two now. Game number two is here on Hardwire, not a weird map. Top right, it's going to be Krullis. Bottom left, it's going to be Jomalex. Don't know what that name means, but I'll take it. It's an interesting one. And I remembered Hyper One talking about a tournament featuring weird maps and got a lot of high-level participation. So, Hyper One is a YouTube personality. And he's a new one at that, but he gets a lot of attention for his weird stuff. And his tournament got a lot of attention from higher-level players and... I think I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the description here. So, all right. So, this replay name is OMG So Dumb. I don't know what we're looking at here, but both players messing around pool first here from Krolis. Both players are attacking with their workers, trying to see what's going on, and etc., etc., etc. And yeah, let's get those lings out. Let's do that. Production tab says six lings on the way. Probe gets killed, so. In the dark now against the Zerg player, which is kind of a scary thing, but, you know, you got the information. Oh, it's a proxy hatch in the main from Krullis. Oh, that's good, Hard Wallet. He's prepared for the Lings here, but are you prepared for this? The answer is no. Jomalex doesn't know about this. I love this setup. Beautiful wall. Got a Zealot in the wall, too, because he knows about the early Lings. And, yeah, you just you do what you do if you show up with early Lings here, right? You just uh, try to... Oh, this is not what you do. Okay, so you sacrifice all of the lings, but guess who just showed up? Mineral walked through your front door. Was a drone? He's throwing up spines. Ah, Jomalex! Jomalex sees this. He sees it's happening. This zealot's still holding the wall, which is his job. He needs to still hold the wall here. I can appreciate that. Oh, and actually, probes fighting against sunken or sunken spines is amazing. Look at that. That was three probes on that spine. Spine's easier to kill than cannons? That doesn't seem fair. Lings popping out. Oh, the Zerglings are trying to keep this alive, but if that coming up would be a major problem for the Protoss player. The probes are sacrificing their little probe bodies. Try to, you know, the spine finishes, but it only has 30 HP. 34 HP. There's an Adept here with five kills. Zealot once again. Oh my gosh, they killed the gateway? Zerglings opened the door. Lings getting into the mineral line. Spine crawler getting tossed down, and all of a sudden, goodbye, main nexus, quite possibly. From Jomalex, oh, he only has one gate. No, Bob the Zealot, Bob the Zealot, murdered. Lings up, I think that's it. I don't know, oh, one stalker microed incredibly well against slow lings, can maybe make this happen. Do you have any gas? This is slow lings from Krolis. Krolis has absolutely no interest in getting speed for these lings or upgrading to a lair or anything. He's the one this thing with slow lings and a spine crawler 
and a queen. Do the transfuse on this would be excellent. Not quite enough energy for it. You need 50. Are you just... I don't know if you could just afford to lose this. Actually, I lied. You can afford to lose this because the Zerg player is on one base. And if you're on one base, you're ahead. That's how the science works in StarCraft 2. Transfuse. Energy for transfuse. Trans... No! No! I... <laughs> I s fine. I, I understand the idea behind a creep tumor here. I do, but man, transfusing that spine would also be super hot, super hot. Trying to throw up some shield batteries here. Gonna get it. Gonna shield battery up. Shield battery over charge. Oh no! It is repairing this. Oh, it's repairing this pylon. Kill the other shield battery. Shield battery over charge is super duper strong, but it's not infinite. Ah, oh, everything's depowered. There's only two stalkers here against Slowlings. They might be able to do this in the hands of someone who's better than Jomalex, but Jomalex is not stats. Jomalex is not trapped. And as a result, he's not microwing perfectly against these Slowlings. It was, I mean, getting between these two minerals was great. No surrounds possible, but yeah, better micro than that was required. And that's your GG. Yeah, Jomalex taps out and Corollas is your winner in five minutes and 20 seconds. That was nuts. 38 lings died to make that happen, but they killed 21 probes, an entire nexus, a gateway, two stalkers, a zealot, two adepts, a couple pylons. I mean, that was intense. That was intense as all can get out. So beautiful play sent in there by Krollis, I assume. Excellent show of proxy hatch, which I personally have a soft spot for. We don't see them enough in the cheese comp. So I'm glad Krollis sent one in this month. I do appreciate it. Good sir. More cheese. We've got more coming. Don't go anywhere. We're here on Blackburn, a good place for weird cheese. Bottom right, it's going to be XP Laz TV. And in the bottom left, we've got our guy, the Swiss. Oh, a Hyper One clan tag. Check that action out. That's fantastic. Ugh. My Discord making noises. I'm sorry, I thought I was on streamer quiet mode, and it's not. Uh, do, 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 do. Four SCVs moving across the map from the Swiss. Oh, <laughs> And lifting to the gold in a TVT. Gutsy. Gutsy play. These SCVs are not for proxies after all. They're here to try to kill the SCV building the barracks. To try to slow down. Oh my gosh. Got it. Rep no. No, 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 no. No. XP last TV. Finish the barracks. Okay. So delays the barracks. Interesting. But that means the Swiss is, is ahead. Oh. And he's getting a reactor up instead of making a reaper. What if an enemy reaper shows up and you don't have any reapers? Dude, this is... Oh, this is amazing. How did... How did SCVs get on that side of the... Of Der Minerals? I don't know. But anyway, Barracks is done for the Swiss. This has to be a reaper. Unless... We, nope! Do, I... Look at me forgetting that Barracks can lift off. Okay, so it's not. We're double... Oh, now XP Laz TV. We're gonna call him Laz TV. He's making double reaper. Oh, he's gonna scout this proxy inside his own main base as well. Look at what he found. <laughs> he comes back and he's like, ah, whatever comes out of this is going to die. Yeah, all right. The Marine's dying and the Swiss is like, crap, not good. Reaper's heading over, but they're going to go to a base that's empty because they don't know about the liftoff plans of the Swiss here. Proxying a factory in the top left of the base too is the Swiss. The Reapers are very confused. They're like, what in the name of tarnation? Are you here? No. Are you here? No. Check the gold. Check. Did he not check the gold? He has checked the gold and decided not to kill anything because he's worried about... She should not be worried about this. Just make more Reapers. Okay, here we go. So, all these SCVs trying to stay alive. Doing their very ever-loving best to do that. The micro from Plaz Laz TV is not the best. It's better now. This case is some better stutter step action. And by step, I mean not stepping because we're floating because we have jetpack. Pew, 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 pew. That's what we're all about. That's what we're into here today, is killing all of the Swiss's units. There's a fusion core coming up. The Swiss has... He needs 300 gas for a battle cruiser. He... Oh, my gosh. He, oh, no. 289. He needs a little bit more gas to make a BC. And the fusion core is almost done. Where can he get more gas? He's going to try to lift off and land somewhere else. I think Last TV feels like he's got this thing won. Uh, oh, oh, the Reapers are leaving? What in the name? I guess there's a Marine being annoying back here, but you don't... No, 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 no. Oh, no, he's letting him back. 
He's letting him back in. And we're just going to mine just enough gas to make a battle cruiser. That's what that fusion core is for. And Laz TV has nothing that can shoot up. Literally nothing. Eight Reapers. And that's it. That's it for his army. There we go. Uh, 300. Immediate production begins now. Do we have supply for it? Yes. Boo, battle cruiser on the way. And the Reapers are too busy. They think this is it. They think if they kill this barracks, but they need things that shoot up. What? How do you think you're going to win a TVT if you have nothing that can shoot up last TV? Your opponent can flip their buildings to the corners. Unless you're just trying to force them to leave because all of their, like, their, their economy is gone and their Reapers, says the Swiss. And because they just give up. I didn't anticipate so many, says the Swiss. It is a lot of Reapers. But look, if you think you have your opponent shut down... Start making Vikings. Start making Marines. Something that can shoot up. Because if... Ugh, Last TV is expanding over here like a boss. Also got his natural up, but I'm just going to watch this production tab for him to make anything that can shoot up other than... Well, uh, just make anything other than Reapers. He finds this little thing, but guess what's over here? The battle... The battle cursor shows up. <laughs> and that's it. Battle cruiser goes to town. Ends up getting 10 total kills. Okay, we gotta watch that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just three, four. The the massacre is real. And this is where Last TV's like, oh. I should have built something that can shoot up. <laughs> uh, and the Swiss. The Swiss is the winner. That was truly fantastic. Really, really enjoyed that. Ugh. Ah. So good. All right. So Battlecruiser Rush, kind of, defeats Mass Reaper. God, that... If he had just kept denying this base, I think Last TV could have won in the long run. He still needed to make something that could shoot up. You're in a TVT. I'm going to say it again. The buildings can lift. You can't win with Mass Reaper against someone who is lifting their buildings unless you can kill their buildings. Okay? Okay. Nice. Next, guess what? We have more of this stuff. Hardwire again, top right, it's the Swiss. He's back. And in the bottom left, it is Bob Blah Blah. A Bob Blah's Blah Blog. If you know that reference, your your reputation has grown by a few points for me. Alright, man. So Gulak Havan says Swiss. And Bob Blah Blah is going to throw down a gateway. All right, so not cannon rushing, just scouting, as well as the Swiss. So both players are just scouting with their probes, harassing a little bit, and being annoying, as probes can be, and blocking the natural base of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Wait, you're not. Okay. I was like, you're going to throw up at the base here? That seems like a terrible, terrible idea. Remember the Swiss? He submitted a replay from Midrake Madness to the channel a while ago where he played 2v2s with his 10-year-old son. Which is super fun. I do like seeing dads get their kids involved in StarCraft, as I've been doing with my boy a little bit. Getting him into Brood War. Get him playing some StarCraft 2 maybe a little bit later. Let's see if he could enjoy that one as well. All StarCraft is good StarCraft. That's how that's how I'm raising my kids in my house. It's all StarCraft is good StarCraft. So, obviously, both players have their cybernetics core out quickly. Because if you only have zealots, and all you can make is zealots, and your opponent shows up with stalkers, you're just going to die. That's all that there is to it. Ooh, there is a proxy nexus over here, though. All right, fine. That's a ninja. Officially proxy ninja from the Swiss. Da -da. Stargate coming in from the Swiss. Da -da. What are we building with it, though? There, you made a Stargate. You have to build things from it. That is Protoss Law. Protoss Law. Or, and just go into Fleet Beacon. Okay, Mothership Rush, maybe. I can support a mothership rush into PvP. I haven't seen one of those in a long while. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Throwing up a forward pylon and a shield battery. He's going to try to do some stalkery stuff here. And shield batteries for the Swiss as well. Maybe, I don't know, Tempest maybe? The Fleet Beacon's not mothership necessarily. When you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras, I believe they say. But we're just making an oracle. You don't need a Fleet Beacon to make an oracle, though. All right, let's do the push. Stalker's up. Guardian shield is here. There's nothing shooting at you. You don't need guardian shield. Uh, what is, what is happening? Where did all the defense... Uh, there's, a, there's not much of defense here at all, actually. So Cybernetic Tour dies, and these shield batteries are not going to last long either. Kill the shield batteries, though! 
I kind of feel like they're your biggest threat here. But this is working pretty well for blah, blah, blah. And ow. See, this is sometimes what happens in PvPs if you go for something crazy like a Fleet Beacon Rush. And then your opponent just shows up with a ton of Stalkers and you die. Yep. All right. So that's not the greatest thing I've ever seen. And an oh, the Oracle just wanders down and gets seven kills. Okay. And it is a mothership. I could smell a mothership. I sniffed it out. So yeah, mothership coming up. You got to buy time for it. Oh, to arrive over here though. Man, probes fighting against adepts and stalkers and zealots is not good for the probe. Recall. Oh, he recalls out. This is where Bob blah, blah, blah needs to realize. Okay. The probes didn't recall back to their own nexus. There's another nexus that exists somewhere in this world. Where is it? Oh, depowering all of this stuff. Okay, this is like shield battery and a dream. I guess this oracle's here too. Could throw down another pulsar beam soon. By soon, I mean soon. And the Swiss, the Swiss, not looking good. But blah 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 needs to be scouting. He's looking, but is he not? He's not finding the ninja. How many probes made it out? 12 probes made it out for the Swiss. Blah 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 has 15 workers, which is not ideal. But okay, so the Swiss's main base is dead. Mothership's gonna do a dimensional recall in here, uh, or just start killing stuff. Just start killing stuff. Motherships do that. They have a slow attack that doesn't hit very hard. Turns out, uh, like even killing a stalker is kind of hard for them. So that's not ideal. Oh, look what we found. Look what we found, says blah, blah, blah. So yeah, the attempt, kill the pylons. Ugh. So target firing has been a bit of a struggle for Protoss today, but you know what? He's got enough stuff. It just maybe doesn't matter here. Oh, the Oracle obliterating the probe line again for blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah is at three total probes. And uh, the Swiss doesn't have enough money for another Nexus, so he... Recalls the probes into the fight. Bring the probes. Dude, invisible probes fighting against these stalkers is actually kind of a hot idea. No, stay with it. Stay with the mothership. Oh, this is going to be base racy material here, isn't it? Base racy material. The Swiss maybe needs to throw up uh, an assimilator here. Um, buildings. It's only these assimilators. The Swiss. Okay, does. Does fire up a simulator inside Bob blah, blah Blah's base in full view of Bob blah, blah Blah, mind you. He knows this is happening, so he knows where to come to get that final building. Oh, this is intense. This is super intense. This Swiss literally has a warping in a simulator as their final building in the StarCraft match today. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. Dude, this is a lot of stalkers. The stalkers can kill this mothership. But can the probes maybe body block? Because they don't have detection. Ooh, big hit. Big, just big, huge volley there on the mother. You can't retreat from this spot. Kill what you can kill. Oh, there's the cloak. There's the cloak. Invisible units are killing your stuff. Oh, no. He doesn't want to go in there, but you have to go in there. This is all of your stuff. He's trying to get an angle to get some shots off at the Swiss, microwing the mothership away from the angle of the stalkers. They're going in there and killing what you can. Yes, kill a probe, maybe kill a zealot as the mothership maybe wanders a little bit too far away. That's a free zealot! Oof! Oof! Injured but not dead. This. <laughs> nah! Using the pros for DPS! This is amazing! Dude, I. Blah, blah, blah. You have to let this go. See, this game's nine and a half minutes because it's been nuts! And I'm allowing it. I'm allowing it to be nine and a half minutes because it's crazy. It's coming down to the wire here. This is an example of one that works. Okay, we really gotta. Okay, you've got two. You have to go for this. Oh, oh, oh. Sell it. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You can't just let your buildings die. Are you. Ooh, he's just letting his. What are you doing? Wow, GG, man. That's it. No, wait, no, wait, hold on. There's this forward stuff. I forgot about that for a minute. And this pylon, too. Oh, this dance. This is a dance for the ages here, isn't it? Oh, everything that comes. Oh, run, run. What are you doing? Oh, no, the final of Dog. Okay, game well played. Blah, blah, blah. Makes the run by to the, to the final assimilator and kills it. And that's how he gets the win. Yes. Yes, that was truly great. This is a really, really good cheese comp. This is some really fun, crazy stuff that you don't usually see. 
And some really close good finishes, too. So that was fantastic. Nicely done. The Swiss sends in a loss, which is two thumbs up from Falcon. Anyone who consistently sends in cheese and stuff, if you send in a loss every once in a while, it's good. Because then players don't go, oh, it's a Swiss replay. Obviously, he's going to win. There's an element of, oh, is he going to pull this one out? I don't know. And that makes it a lot more fun to watch. So, yeah, beautiful. The Swiss did what he could. He made a final assimilator. He didn't have enough money for anything else. And then the run-by of the Stalkers. He waited for this to get open. Made the run-by. Bam. Recognizing he still had these buildings up north. And these ones dying didn't really mean all that much in the long run. So, well done. Really nice ninja expand here. Mothership rush. And then the enemy showed up with too many Stalkers. And, and in the end, that was just too much. Too many Stalkers is a way that a lot of Protoss die. Uh, their enemies are killing it economically. So, GG. More. Cheese. Next. We're here on Fortitude for a 4v4 featuring Hyper One and company. Red Zerg player Hyper One, his teammate is a Teal Zerg named Velvet. We also have another Zerg player named I'm 12. Yeah, I know that guy. And Worst Girl, who's another Zerg. So Zergy Zerg team versus a team Terran with Zesty. We've got a Protoss named Assassin XY, a, a yellow Terran named Beefy, and Retaliate, who is a Zerg player. So this is where we watch Hyper One real close. He's going to do something crazy here. He can't cannon rush because he's a Zerg player, which is just... It's a weakness that the Zerg has, is they can't cannon rush. Uh, I mean, they can maybe proxy hatch and spine crawler rush. That's the closest thing that they have to it. But anyway, being annoying and scouting and Team Protoss and Terran, and I guess there's a Zerg here. So all three races represented on Team South, which is rough. And they get to cannon rush because they have Protoss on their team. So Assassin XY going for cannon forward cybernetics core. And then, oh, uh, once you're protected, this is not good. Lol, says Hyper One. Sup? Says Assassin XY. I'm going to cannon rush you in the face, but you can't. Cannon rushing Team Zerg is interesting. He's new, says Zesty. Like, cannon rushing Team Zerg is rough because you can't cannon on top of creep. And there's Ravagers out from I'm 12, and there's Roaches out from Hyper One. Yeah, and then you just cross a bile down these cannons. Pfft, worst Girl has Ravagers, too. So that just completely shuts that down. Yep, so that is a cheese fail maneuver from Assassin XY for sure. I like that Zesty said he's new. I think, <laughs> like, you don't cannon rush a team of four Zerg players. One of them's going for an early pool or early Ravagers or something. And you just can't get close enough to their buildings because of the creep. I mean, you can. If you've got a cannon here, for example, it'd be really problematic for a lot of buildings. But here comes the Ravager push. Bruh. I mean, do you not have anything? Zesty's got... Some barracks. Oh, he went for a fast expand. Bunch of lings are here from Retaliate. Is there like a tank or anything? Not that tanks are that great against Ravagers anyway. Oh, it was Mass Reaper. Oh no, you chose poorly, Zesty. You can't go Mass Reaper against Ravagers. Ravagers are like the best thing, well, the best moderately early game unit that Zerg has against Mass Reaper is Ravagers. I mean, Mutas are better for obvious reasons. Oh, and then a Nidus follow-up from Velvet. I'm not sure if that's required here. I think Zesty's straight up dead. Assassin's dead because he cannon rushed. Uh, Beefy's working on... Um, Beefy's working on making SCVs. Does he really not have an army? Beefy doesn't believe in having an army. Did he leave the game? Why are you building an engineering bay? Build out of... Beefy! Why does he not have any money either? Did he leave? I don't know what Beefy's doing right now, but he's not helping his teammate win this game. His teammates win this game at all. Assassin's building stuff at least. How do you have three reactor barracks? Oh, another Nidus coming out from Velvet here too. Uh, so I don't know if Beefy's gone. He's spending money on a tank and four Marines. All right, so that, I mean, that is just a well-executed Roach Ravager push from two of the Zergs. A Nidus play here from Velvet, and what, who are we missing? Who's not in this battle? Worst Girl? Worst Girl? No, Worst Girl has Roaches and Ravagers too. GG! Team Zerg, Team Hyper 1. Ends up winning that one. Great comp for sure. So, yeah, Roach Ravager from, and then Ling Nidus, and then Roach Ravager. Okay, so three of them went Roach Ravager, one went Ling Nidus Queen. And that'll get it done. So well done, Team Hyper One. I'm 12 and Velvet and Worst Girl getting the win there against a failed cannon rush. I don't know what Beefy was doing today. I really don't know what Beefy was doing today. He made somehow made 24 SCVs 
and four Marines and had, I guess he was folding some cash at the end, but strange, strange play from the Terran player. It looked like he was going to be ready. He had three reactor barracks up. Maybe he spent all his money on reactor barracks and hadn't started building any actual units yet. Maybe that's the problem. GG. <laughs> GG next up. We'll find, I don't know, some more cheese. How about like a mirror match maybe? Let's find out. Uh, ZVZ on 2000 Atmospheres. All right, why is this interesting? Bottom left, we have Meusa. Meusa? Meusa. And in the top right, we've got Geek T, which is kind of a fun name. Go look, have fun, says Greek T. Mm, moving a drone across the map. My favorite cheese in ZVZ is the one where you go 12 pool and then you show up with a bunch of drones and plant spine crawlers on your enemies creep here and it's something that's really popular at the highest level of zvz so like rogue serral rainer dark all those guys love to do it and they'll do it in premier tournaments too and it's hilarious it's always fun like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't which is kind of you know if you've got a build that sometimes works against pros that you're matched up against you keep it in your back pocket it, you only stop using it if it never works right <gasps> proxy hatch from from mesua no expansion down here at the natural Roach Warren. I love it. I love the proxy with the Roach Warren on the follow up here. Got that gas coming in as you want to be doing. Uh, really standard stuff here from Geek T. Got a pool, got a hatch down. Pretty fast hatch. Looks like, yeah, hatch first into pool, which uh, is that going to hurt him in the long run because this is a really fast Roach Warren that's done now, the two minute and 15 second mark. Oof, ooh, burrow. Mesu is getting burrow too. Ah, oh, fantastic. Loving to see some Burl Roach shenanigans. Oh, who gets detection? Who gets detection in the first three minutes of a ZVZ? Nobody does. You're not going to have a lair. You're not going to have spores up. What do you need spores up for? You only... It's Burl Roach. You're only worried about Burl Roach. But who's worried about Burl Roach? Hey, look what we found. We found this creep. Oh, no. Roach is good into position. That's not the greatest position. Lings aren't fantastic fighters here if they don't have the plus one upgrade or better upgrades than the roaches. But getting fully surrounded by Lings is a death recipe for anybody. The Burrow finishes. Unless you have Burrow, are you going tunneling, Claws? Geek T immediately throws up a spore. Immediately throws up a lair. Immediately throws up another spore. It says, okay, so Burrow roaches are our nemesis here today. Gonna try to move on in. Get, like, tunneling claws would be super hot here, Mesua. I'm just saying, from a caster perspective. We'll see, but now we've got a spine. Now we've got a spore up at the front. I don't know. This is a lot of lings, and that spine's a problem. I'd maybe throw down another spine, but extra queens can be pretty good here, too. With the extra energy for transfuse and stuff. No, 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 no. I don't know that you want to fight them. They have burrow. Okay, are they burrowing when they... Yes. Okay, okay. I think they're burrowing. How many roaches have died? Two. Should not be more than one. Uh, bring... Do you make an overseer? You have a lair. Did you make the overseer? Geek T, I understand it's really scary. And a lot of chaos is happening right now. But bringing in an overseer would really help you win this battle. Oh, queen down. Speedlings now. They're better against roaches because they close the distance a lot better. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There was not time for Geek T to move out there, is what I'm going to say here. I cannot believe he hasn't made a single Overseer yet, either. Geek T, we need you to have an Overseer. Pulling back, doesn't want to fight in range of that spine if he can help it. Brought a queen along. Just built it. Just built it here at the, at the proxy. Speed leaves. Okay, so Spore Crawler dying means you can burrow inside the enemy base now, because he's refusing to make... An overseer, which seems like a major problem. Uh, the Geek T is over, over. He's overlooking that he, the fact that he doesn't have an overseer. It's 34 to 17 army supply. Mesua has a fantastic position. This might just be an A move go kind of a thing. I know there's a single spine, but like, that's not a lot of lings. It's only two queens. Yeah, all right. So he's going to come in and knife down the spine and then just kind of go from this point on. You're not going to transfuse lings. Because it's not worth, but this queen's bringing some transfuses into the battle, and yeah, that's, that's it. Extra spine comes up, gets two pokes. Oh, with the transfuse, gets three pokes. And then that queen's almost dead. I understand you want to kill the detection, but also just kill these queens, and then you can kill the detection. There we go. That's what I like to see here. Decision making, and that's it. Army value is nine from Geek T. He's got some lings out, which, um. 
don't know where they are exactly. How did I lose a, such a dumb build, says Geek T. It's a fair point. You didn't make an Overseer is part of it, Geek T. You had an Overseer. You wander over to those burrowed roaches over here, and you kill them all while they're burrowed. And then you win the game. I like how the queens burrow, too. Smiley face, says Mesua. Whatever, says Geek T. Also, not getting burrow move. Take the free points, says Geek T. <laughs> That's what we like to see is free ladder points. The freest of ladder points. Yeah, that was fantastic. I love that. That that was interesting, right? ZVZs with interesting, weird, strange, cheesy builds. Two thumbs up. 3,800 resources lost from Geek T. 1,600 from Mesua. 83 to 15 re total units lost here today is a lot. That's a lot of dead. Dead Geek T. Good. Next. More. More cheese. More. Pride of Alteris. Bottom right. We've got our guy. Man of the hour. It's Hyper One. In the top left, we have Skillbo Fragons. <laughs> okay, that's a fun name. I like that immensely. Skillbo Fragons. Winner. Winner today. Woof. I pulled up the Lord of the Rings movies the other night because I was like, I want to watch the Battle for Helm's Deep and I want to watch the the lighting of the beacons scene from Return of the King and a couple other specific scenes. It's just good. It's just good. There's a lot more like funny time in it than I remember watching it back, you know, 20 years ago. Especially like everything Gimli says is about funny. I don't know. I don't know. I did actually read this thing recently that said J.R.R. Tolkien wasn't a huge fan of the Lord of the Rings movies. And I wonder if it's all the humor that was brought into it. Anyway, Hopper One's going for a proxy gold base here. Which is, you know, something we've seen players like Rogue and Serral and like Rainer do. So, if top level Zergs are doing this stuff, then by all means, copy their builds. Copy them. Do what they do. Get that extra money up. And what are you going to use it for is the question, Mr. Hyper One. Do you have any gas? Sort of. Two on gas. And you're going for a Baneling Nest. Oh, it's feeling Roach Warren. A lot of roaches today, but hey, Baneling good too. So now this is where the Reaper's like... Wow, the camera can't keep up with the Reaper at this speed. You saw that creep. Yeah, you know that creep is there. Oh, you do know now anyway. So you know it's there. But yeah, wiping out everything in the main base would be pretty good. I don't know why you wouldn't just do that. Yeah, okay. So drone down have to turn them into buildings which totally sucks but i mean this isn't a large proportion of the income from hyper one anyway and then he tries to move down here and get some work done this is a mass reaper versus proxy ah très interessante interessante all right so reaper is not good against queens but you know everything's good against something as long as you can hit it and you have mass numbers so, oh, the drones get the surround on the Reapers. So, oh, three or four of the Reapers go down and another one dies. No control here for Skillbo Fragons. Not particularly good. You should not be losing. I guess speed is done for these Lings. So, you know what? You can lose Reapers to Speedlings if you, gosh, so darn incline. If you so incline. Yeah, if you incline or if you are inclined. Are you going to try to Baneling bust this? I love it. You need more than two Banelings to get through this. Uh, there's four more on the way somewhere. Ah, back here, there's some mm, four total. You need five to bust a supply depot, but if you want to use Lings for the last little bit of damage, that works too. So, oh, Baneling's kill. Oh, it's a good snipe on that Baneling. Every Baneling matters right now for Hyper One. Quick, more buildings. Throw up reinf like bunkers reinforcing this area. We are just making nothing but Reapers, aren't we? Skillbo is not, he's not adjusting his strategy based on what his enemy is doing at all. Uh, he's getting a factory. Okay, maybe he is. Maybe that's unfair. And I love the Overlord float in because you're like, yo, you don't have anything that can shoot up because you want Mass Reaper. What have we learned about Reapers today? They can't shoot up. That's twice. That's twice now we've learned that lesson. Anyway, yeah, this is more than enough Banelings to get through. Why are you not at the ramp? It's a Baneling bust. Dude, don't let the Banelings die before they kill the... Get the lings out of the way! There we go. <laughs> oh, Marines come out just in time to die. Oh, Banelings connecting on those Reapers would be so useful. Oh, they stopped microing. Well, if you're not going to micro your Reapers, then yeah, you deserve for them all to die. I guess he was busy microing the SCVs to provide a wall up there. Oh, you didn't win. Uh-oh. Uh, as a Zerg player, if you don't win with, a, win with a Baneling bust, it's really hard to win later. And by later, I mean with your second or third or fourth Banelings bus. Oh, he's so... Hyper One's a master of hiding the Banelings, isn't he? 
He really likes hiding Banelings in places where the enemy hopefully won't find them and then do bad things. Oh, he didn't re-wall. Why would you not re-wall? Uh, well, the Marines are out, so the Overlord has to go now. I think this... Why are the Banelings going this way? Is that an F2 A move? Might be. Oh, Reaper. Just the Speedling massacred on these poor Reapers, man. All right. So I guess... He's assuming the wall is back, I think. Otherwise, you just kind of walk the Banelings into this mineral line and see what you can get done. Because maybe you're waiting. Oh, the Marines left the house, too. That Do not explode the Banelings on the Marines. Mm -hmm. He thinks the wall is back. Okay. The wall is back now, in all fairness. So now you do have to bust it down. But for a minute there... Oh, there's a Hellion. That's not good. A Hellion is pretty scary stuff, unless it gets surrounded by speedlings and dies. Okay, that was really nice control. Oh no, and then the wall was down, GG! <laughs> oh, Skillbo Fragons, you can't, you can't with your wall down. Oh man, that was fun. That was a really good one, Hyper One. Resources lost, uh, about the same, pretty much. Uh, the Terran lost more, which is never good. Never good at all, but... End of the day, I mean, Mass Reaper is not going to do great against Ling Bane, Bane Ling Bus style stuff, so understandable that Skill, skill Bow went down. Also, lack of control on the Reapers, but pretty good control from Hyper 1 in most of the, most of the time. A couple of mistakes there, but not enough to lose the game. So next up, we've got a few more cheeses to go for the month of May. Hit that like button if you haven't already. It's Concord. It's more 4v4 shenanigans from Hyper 1. Bottom left, it's Warix, a Red Zerg player. His teammate next door is a Protoss who is purple named Danks. We also have a blue zerg named Antaro Adun, which is fun. I go for the easiest build, says Velvet. And then Toxon Toxonius, who's a Protoss. Team North, we've got Cheesy, a green zerg, a pink Protoss named Velvet. We have a red Protoss named Yavaloon. And then we've got Hyper One playing Terran. So Team North here doing shenanigans. Everybody just like exchanging workers. Cannon rush attempt here from Yavaloon. Concord's a really fun 4v4 map. Cannon rushing is hard. <laughs> says somebody says that uh, Velvet said it was hard. I don't know. So we're gonna actually no. We're gonna proxy gate here, which is totally fine stuff. And oh, Hyper One's blocking this. Ah, okay, so Hyper One is throwing up forward barracks, so it can't be walled. But also, hey, enemy Zergs can't get out, but you can produce Marines from this location. So that's a little nuts. Oh, throwing up. Thinking about throwing up something here. This is some aggressive play. Some insanely aggressive play here today from oh, the Marines are on the other side of the wall. You can't get out. Oh, Zelda can't get through either. No, 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 no. This is a terrible life choice. Don't bring, don't try to get through this wall. These are barracks. They are beefy. They are strong. It will take you way too long for your Zealots and Lings to get through this. They will all die first. Yeah, it's like your Zealot's dead and your other Zealot's dead. And sure, you have to repair a little bit, but I mean, this thing wasn't even in the red yet. And then you just walk your marines through. Would you lower the supply depot? Ah, such a sick play. Such a sick play here. Man, again, if you want me to cast your cheese, send it to falconpaladin at gmail.com. Subject cheese. We'll get it to the screeners. We'll get them cast for the month of June next. This is a really, really good cheese comp. Really fantastic. I'm enjoying it immensely. I guess while we're at it, you can support me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin. For as little as a dollar a month, you can click the join button down below to join the channel as a member of the YouTube channel for as little as a couple bucks a month. You can also just send one time like donations if you're not interested in uh, recurring payments. You can do that at PayPal. So falconpaladin at gmail.com for PayPal. Uh, and then I think that's pretty much it if you want to support me. Hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel is also a great free way to support the channel. Dark Danks managed to get some cannon rushing up here in Yavaloon's base. Is there more of this? That's a, oh yeah, he's counter nourishing Hyper 1 too, but oh, Hyper 1 has enough awareness to shut that down. Marines counterattacking on the other side. Yavaloon Zealots are here too. Oh, it's Zealot Marine comp is really tough for Zerg to handle. I like the Roaches. The Roaches and Lings are probably the greatest idea, but do you have enough of either of those things? And the answer is not really no. So Queen getting some extra damage in there and actually doing some Great work. Two kills on that queen. Does get taken down. The Zealot's still alive, and the Roaches are killed. Additional Roaches from Antaro Adun are showing up. Uh, yeah, so getting rid of the cannons. That <laughs> Thanks is still trying, man. Still trying. No saving Yavaloon's base, which is a problem. Antaro Adun has a proxy hatch up here. 
that he was probably doing shenanigans, shenanigans with that I was not paying attention to, so I apologize for that. Roaches do eventually clean up the marine pressure here from Hyper 1. Uh, trying to throw up a forward cannon. Oh, it's a DT follow-up from Velvet. Oh, oh, crap. Did we not make detection? You know, I always talk about getting safety spores up, getting detection up at around 3.30 or 4 minutes. But I do admit, when it's a chaotic game, it is really hard to remember to do that on time. And if these are showing up at 4.30 and it's never really slowed down, then... Okay, honestly, DT, get in here and kill these drones. Don't do bring around the Rosie with this, with the roaches here. Yeah, like this one. This DT is making sure these probes all hate their lives. And they certainly do. Oh, detection up. Spore crawler up. He tries to kill the spore. Can't do it. Transfuse is keeping alive. Sick transfuse from Entaro. A dude. Roaches trying to get out. This is the problem with trying to get out. Is There's this huge wall and there's cannons and there's marines and DTs and stuff. Super annoying. The pinging is going okay, all right. Hyper One's pinging like mad. Another DT shows up to replace his fallen brother. This DT is going to town on drones. Yeah, I, uh, Dank is basically done with income right now. On the other side, a ton of lings come out from... Uh... Wait, cannons are here from Danks. What the heck? Danks managed to get a cannon rush up here. How are you guys getting secretly cannon rushed when you are the first cannon rush was so terrible? This is insane. This back and forth is cray cray. We have a zealot killing this, right? Yeah. I don't know where he is. No, we don't. What? Oh, you're busy. You're killing a dead gateway. Come kill this lair. Oh, there's an overseer up already, though. It's too late. It's too late. Overseers are up. This is chaos. So basically, Danks is dead. And basically, Warix is dead, too. So Team South has two entirely dead players. And Taro Adun's all right. And Toxonius is doing fine, too. He really is. He's doing truly okay. But yeah, the answer here is going to be Roachling Overseer. Did you lose your lair? You lost your lair! Oh, these lings aren't enough to kill these DTs. Where do the roaches go? Why are he's trying to deal with DTs in his own face here? Oh, this is problematic. He's so worried about the DTs. Where's the Overseer at? Ah, uh, where did it go? Oh, Marines are back from Hyper 1. They're just going to go ahead and wipe out what's left of Warwick. There's an Overseer from Velvet in the house, which is super rad. Overseer from Warwick finally shows up, and these roaches are dead. I mean, the DTs are dead. A couple of roaches are going to die too, yes, but yeah, that is not a fair fight whatsoever. Blah. Our guy Warwick has zero supply remaining. He is done. Dunzo runzo. Lings from Cheesy are here. They didn't want to die. They're going home because... There's an enemy DT from Toxonius inside Cheesy's base. Oh no! Oh no, the DT counterattack. This is so good. This is such a good crazy 4v4. There's cannon rushing from Team South. There's DT rushing from Team South. There's DT rushing from Team North. There's proxy shenanigans from Team North here. Cyclone from Hyper One joins the party. I don't know if he's necessary entirely, but he's better against roaches than these lings are, so hey. Reasonable stuff. Archon not good against roaches either, except. For the bonus versus biological side of this, which is pretty strong. A couple of roaches died there for sure. This one's going to get one hit off and then explode terribly. But the marine cyclone stuff is pretty fantastic. Oh, just regular. Man, cyclones are fast. They're so good. DT is still hacking away here. Velvet loses the main nexus. DT's in here going against. Oh, Velvet's second nexus. Trying to keep this cannon alive. Does manage to give it the hug of a life with probes. But the Nexus is down. I don't know if anyone's really going to, like, quit this game anytime early. Roaches from Antaro Adun. They get the Cyclone. Okay, that's big, actually. That's really impressively big. Antaro Adun has two bases. But maybe we'll just have one after this marine attack is finished with it. Ooh, free Roach. Free Roach. And trying to use Speedlings to deal with these DTs. Going to work pretty well, actually. Wow. Toxonius loses all the DTs to the mass speedlings from Cheesy. That's why Cheesy went home, was to help with those, and did manage to succeed with it. More DT Up oh, here, though, Toxonius got more DT shenanigans. Did he really eventually get cannon rushed and lose that? Hyper One just abandoned ship and went for the gold base instead. Smart stuff. Marines killing the main base of the blue. Shield battery trying to keep 
the Dark Shrine alive and might actually, no, not going to be able to heal through that damage with Marines too. So Dark Shrine dies for Toxonius. And Tarawadun still has a base down here, but I mean, what does Tarawadun have for army? He's got six Urglings and a Roach. Doesn't seem like it's enough, probably. So yeah, once Toxonius is dead, I think that's going to be all she wrote. And there's just too much army, too much enemy on top of his stuff. For this to really ever work out for him. So GG, his DT Shrine is dead, says Velvet. Can't make any more Dark Templar. He's going to try to get some cannons to buy some time here too. But yeah, depowering these gateways. Depowering the rest of it here by killing this pylon. And that's it. Toxonius is dead. I don't know if he's willing to accept that he's dead, but he's dead. Uh, Yabaloon has actually built a nice little home for themselves over down this left side. Yeah, it's coming in with the oracles against enemy cannons. But I mean, I don't know. Just in case there's roaches that show up, I guess. Oracle's going to be fine in that situation. I'm not sure that oracle is what we want here. Void Rays might be better, actually. In this particular setup here, Danks has a base mining, which is fantastic. He's only got nine supply, though. <laughs> uh, it is going to be Roach Queen. Kept the spawning pool alive, which maybe is a bit of a mistake, but no, 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 It's... Cheesy's got 113 supply. He's not in this battle. I don't know where Cheesy is, actually. He's got 14 Hydras somewhere. Yeah, we're just going to Marine Cyclone Stalker this Roach army down. And you know what? The Oracles would be useful in this battle in conjunction with the rest of his stuff. Cyclone has got only two kills here. But yeah, the Roach is just outnumbered horribly. Why are we killing the Overseer? I guess for the DTs. So the DTs are way more effective. Everybody pulls back, sends the DTs in, and that's it, man. And Taro Adun is dead. I understand that Danks wants to be doing this thing. Mass Oracle from Yavaloon is trying to deal with these cannons. I'm actually going to use Pulsar Beam to maybe burn down the Nexus, which is a, not a use of Oracle that I may have ever seen before, in all honesty. And that's it. Warex leaves the game. He's been dead for a while, though. And Taro Adun has zero total supply, too. His production tab is empty. He's also a dead Zerg player, and that's your GG. Tuxonius leaves. Danks leaves. Cheesy throws a GG out, and that's it. Hyper One, Yavaloon, Cheesy, and Velvet are your winners in an incredibly chaotic 11 minute and 52 second 4v4. Woof. Woof. Resources lost 6,000 the most for Velvet in this game. Uh, 7,600 actually from Entaro Adun. 8,002, actually, from Otaro Adun. 7,600 from Toxonius. So, yeah, T Team South had a rough time of it there. Uh, too many buildings died, obviously. They didn't really scout the forward proxy stuff from Hyper 1 at all, and it just kind of snowballed from there. The cannon rushing did end up forcing Hyper 1 to relocate and totally killing Yavaloon's main base, and the DT shenanigans from Toxonius did do some good work there uh, against the player who it was that that was having trouble with it, uh, Velvet. Velvet was having trouble with that one. But at the end of the day, not enough damage to kill Team North, and Team South was forced to tap out, so GG. Let's keep this ball rolling. How much more of these do we have? I think we have two. Two, two, two. So stick with it, and uh, we'll be right back. It's Pride of Alteris. It's a ZVP. Between our bottom right Zerg player, Corollis, and it's a Protoss player named Memlir. So Mlir? Which is kind of hard to say. Mlir? <laughs> Turn up a pylon back home. Additionally, I do have a weekly podcast with myself and Somicron. He is an Aussie longtime subscriber of mine. We talk about StarCraft II tournaments. We talk about TV shows and books and movies and all sorts of nerd stuff like the Halo show. Uh, talked about Arcane. Uh, I started playing Elden Ring if you want to hear my thoughts on that. So to check out Falcon Paladin Hour. Actually, the VODs go up on YouTube. Ooh, Scouting Drone dies. So if you search Falcon Paladin Hour on YouTube, you'll find them on Somicron's channel. We also do them live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash Somicron. S-O-M-I-C-R-O-N. Somebody tried to expand here and got shut down, I think, is what happened. So Curlis has got pool first, lings out sub two minutes. Oh, and he's proxy hatching. Did he proxy hatch in the first game too? Curlis, you know the quickest way to my heart. Oh, why are the lings here? I guess maybe they were trying to kill the pylon they thought was still there. So, this is a hard thing to wall properly, but you have the advantage of high ground, which is nice. Oh, crap, the lings are here. 
So the links have arrived. I think you can just win this. Or run, run, run by. Okay. Does he, I mean, you can see the creep now. <laughs> oh, he's pulling all the probes off the line. That's not good. So the zealot dies. What? What? The zealot lived. I thought the zealot was going to die and the links would pull back, but the probes are way too good fighters. And he's using all of his income to try to take down this hatchery. I don't know if that's the correct decision to make here. Uh, I guess not all of it. He's still got some probes. 12, actually? That's... Is this 12? Goodness, he's got way more probes on that than I expected. So he's doing fine. 25 to 15 workers to get afford. To... Oh my gosh. No, no, no. The zealot died and the queen came out and the lings are fighting and suddenly... Oh no! Mleer! Uh, this is a queen with two, three, four kills. All right. Trying to get a cannon up to deal with this. That's probably not going to happen. Tumor pulled. Queen's go okay. Probe's going for that surround again. Not this time, says the queen. But the lings get murdered. And the creep tumor gets sniped by the probes too. So the probe fighting here from Malir is pretty fantastic. I love that position. Oh, that was going to be... It was a good position for a minute. If only like one probe can attack you at a time for sure. Get stuck in there. More lings popping out. Trying to get some early damage on that cannon. Cannon jumped on it. Uh, trying to give it the hug of life with these probes. Fighting the lings and keeping the cannon alive. Oh my gosh. Malir. <laughs> Six kill cannon. Good game. Well played. Corollas taps out. Oh, that cat has got eight kills. Oh. And Corolla sends in a loss. Man, that was some sick control from Malir. I can't believe he kept that zealot alive initially. That was insane with the probe control. And he knew. He knew the Zerg Blur did not have many workers. He could afford to sacrifice 10 probes and still be up at this point. Even after losing 10 probes, they fill up 21 to 15 workers there. That's exactly what we're here for. It's amazing control from Malir. He's got a second base. He's pretty comfortable with that. And then, yeah, losing that queen was rough. Not killing this cannon. It's only got 3 HP. Oh, that's such a rough, rough position to be in. Krolls is floating some money, which with some better injects, right? And maybe some spine crawlers getting tossed down or something good like that. This could have turned into a win from him. He had the money to do it. But hey, it's chaotic. Hindsight is 2020. And let's move on to the final cheese of the day. I'm ready for it. Are you? It's going to be Berlingrad. Top left. It is Hyper One. Bottom right. It is Toxic. <laughs> What a clever name you have, Toxic, with your Brood War skinned Nexus here. Ooh. All right, what are we going to do, Hyper One? He was just having a conversation with me and Alchemy in my Discord server today, which if you want to check that out, uh, Discord li invitation link is probably in the description. If you want one, let me know. You can come join. Anyway, and Hyper One was talking about how crazy Clown Fiesta PvP is. How you have to prepare for, like, every piece of the Protoss... Uh, tech tree in the first few minutes because it's so chaotic and he's not wrong Protoss has the ability to tech, tech up very quickly Terran and Zerg are recognizant of that anyway Hyper One throws down a pylon to prevent a wall off here oh and uh, okay and another pylon here too but then Toxic's like nope nope no 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 we're walling this off baby this probe is trying to get back in from Toxic can't even do it. A Zealot from Toxic is going to try to take down this pylon from Hyper One. But Hyper... Oh, he's cannon rushing? He's cannon rushing and he's got Zealots coming in. So, cannon comes up, dies. Second cannon's up and this one might be the doom of everything and that's your good game well played! Okay, hold on. That deserves a bit of a rewatch there. A bit of a re-examination there. So, Hyper One comes in. He does have a forge here. Interesting. So why not just cannon rush? Like, why the double gateway? I'm not sure. I'm not sure the double gateway was necessary here. But yeah, then he throws up a cannon and another cannon. And this zealot is stuck outside the wall. So can't help kill these cannons. And he tries to pull more probes. But probably should have brought more than just three in the situation. Also, I like that this probe from Hyper One is messing with these probes while they're trying to fight. Oh, and then throws up a pylon so they can't get the full surface area on this cannon here too. So the Zealot finally busts through, but like there are still his own gateways in the way. He can't help with this cannon. 
And bam, that's your good game well played. Fantastic little build there. Out of Hyper 1. I'm still, again, I don't know that the Zealots were necessary. Uh, I guess, yeah, I really don't think so. The Cannon Rush is probably ample enough. But GG, well done there from Hyper 1 getting the cheese. And that's going to be it for me today. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and a cheese comp for May 2020. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.